Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again, and welcome back to AEL. Now, if you're new to this channel, please consider going down below and subscribing if you haven't done so already. Cheers. Today, we're going to be looking at a let's find a random circuit on the internet and see if it works. So currently, we're looking at a simple utility amplifier that runs off of 9 volt DC that uses a BC337 and 327 respectively as the output pair in push-pull configuration with a 470 microfarad blocking capacitor going through the speaker driver. Now, we do notice, however, that the positive of the speaker, we're going to assume, is connected to the positive DC supply rail. We also have this 1K8 resistor, which is providing DC feedback into the biasing network to the output stage. So there is going to be a slight forward DC voltage running through this speaker all the time. How much that is, is to be determined and measured. Um, I don't think it's going to be that high or of a concern, but from a design standpoint, it probably is not a good idea to run DC through the speaker voice coil. However, it remains to be tested. The output transistors are self-biased by these two 1N4148 signal diodes, like most standard amplifiers are. And we'll notice there's no emitter degeneration here. Now, I know from personal experience that using BC337 and 327 as an output stage without emitter degeneration, especially if the supply voltage is higher than 9 volts, these transistors will go into thermal runaway very easily. And what thermal runaway is, for people that don't know, is the current starts increasing through the transistor device as the transistor heats up. The more the transistor heats up, the more current is drawn, and so on and so forth. The cycle repeats until the transistor destroys itself, or in other words, the safe operation area, the SOA curve, is exceeded. So when I'm testing this, I'm going to put some emitter degeneration resistors in here. I'm thinking probably 10 ohm. I don't have anything really lower than 10 ohm. And as we see, this first transistor here is our input stage. It's just basically a class A voltage amplification stage, also input transistor, in which the collector drives the base of the 327 directly through the biasing network to the other transistor. And we have some negative feedback or DC negative feedback via this 82K resistor back to the base of this transistor to control well, the gain. And apart from the input capacitor and this blocking resistor, which will stop it from picking up RF and amplifying it, there's not much really to talk about this circuit. We've got some bulk filtering here. So the next thing to do would be to build this up on breadboard and just verify that the thing even works. Does it work? Does it uh, not work? What do we have to do to make it work? And if it does work, let's test its power output and sound quality. As to what you could use this circuit for, well, it's not going to produce much power, probably in the range of about 100, 150 milliwatts, something like that. But you could use it for the back end of a radio receiver, such as an AM, FM radio receiver or a communications receiver, or anything that requires a small amplifier to drive a small speaker to be able to audibly hear the output of whatever it is you're amplifying. So let's get busy building this up on breadboard, testing it and seeing what happens. Let's go. All right, so a short time later, I've got the circuit built and I'm ready to test it. Now I've got a multimeter set to the DC voltage scale connected across the output. I just want to measure what the actual DC output is because the speaker is connected to the positive rail. I've got the power supply set to 12 volts at 500 MA current limit and I've included a couple of 10 ohm resistors in the emitter circuits of the output transistors as the generation because I did find during testing at 12 volts, they did go into thermal runaway very, very easily. So I'll turn the power on. All right, we've got about 11 millivolts. So that's less than one milliamp of current being dissipated through the speaker, which yeah, should be all right. And as the circuit has warmed up and stabilized, that voltage has actually dropped off considerably. It's about nearly half what it was. And the current drawer on the circuit at the moment is only about a milliamp, so this is unloaded. So now let's load the circuit. So with the circuit loaded into 8 ohms now, I've got the oscillator connected and the oscilloscope connected, and as we can see, we do have an output. However, I'm in the wrong configuration scale here. This should be times one. 
So currently we're pushing about a volt RMS out and there's clipping. It's more sharper at the top of the peak than it is at the bottom of the peak but it's more rounded. We've got 1.36 volt RMS into 8 ohms which is 231 milliwatts. Not bad for a little amplifier like that. Let's try swapping it to 4. Uh, I don't think I've tested this into 4 yet, but we're going to find out. So that's what it looks like into 4. There's clipping. Back it off. So it looks more like a synthesoidal. We're only getting 817 millivolt RMS, which if my calculation is correct, it's only 166 milliwatts, which is you know, pretty dismal. Mm, yeah, but trans seem okay. Uh, so into four ohms, it's not the best, but into eight ohms, it's perfectly fine. All right, let's hook it up to a speaker now and see how it sounds. Speaker's connected. Oscillator's still connected as well. Yeah. Doesn't sound too bad. However, with the oscillator off, I am picking up one kilohertz from somewhere. And this did this on another amplifier um, a while ago that was at uh, a five watt quasi complementary and I think it's the breadboard here. I don't think it's the power supply. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change over to the linear supply and see if that uh, one kilohertz is still there. All right, well, the linear supply is connected. Well, there's no noise. Interesting. Um, so it's got to be the WAMP Tech power supply that's producing that um, interference with the circuit. Interesting. However, I've tested it on other amplifiers using the same power supply that are built on PCBs and it doesn't do it. It may be a combination of the breadboard and the power supply. But anyway, I'm going to go to a lower frequency, I'm going to 400 hertz. I mean, it sounds all right. So let me go to uh, 4,400 hertz. Okay, it seems to be producing a broad range of frequencies so as an amplifier it's useful power wise not really but it can be used for like the back end of a radio receiver you know like an AM FM radio or communications receiver things like that um, just to you know be able to amplify the detected output other than that it's a pretty useless circuit and I'm not going to make a PCB for this I don't really see the need to go to that effort to do it um, it's you know just a basic basic circuit that you could build up on veriboard or stripboard without you know having a proper PCB and it doesn't seem to be that layout is all that critical uh, anyway so to finalize this video I'm going to hook this up to an audio source and play, well, a track. Okay, this is not probably going to be that loud, but let's go.
Okay, that's enough of that. Uh, it does work, but there is a slight lack of base there, but that's only due to the output capacitor. Because it's only like a 220 microfarad capacitor. So, yeah, there will be a lack of base there. However, the circuit does work. Um, it does produce a broad range of frequencies, so it's good as a general purpose amplifier. But as I said, I'm not going to make a PCB for this because, well, I don't really see the need to having another, you know, 200 milliwatt odd amplifier knocking about. Um, I've got plenty of them and have got no use for them. But if anyone is actually interested in maybe having a PCB made for this, let me know in the comments and I may route one and release it on PCB way if you're so interested. But for now, I'm going to leave this video here. I've explored a random circuit on the internet to see if it works. It does, um, just with a slight modification of adding two 10 ohm resistors in the emitters of the uh, BC327 and 337 respectively, so it doesn't experience thermal runaway. Uh, during testing, initially, I found at 9 volt there was no thermal runaway. But as soon as it went to 12 volt, yeah, the current started increasing, the output decreased, and those transistors got red, red hot. I'm surprised they're actually still working. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to go down below, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And this is the Astro 30 as always saying, see ya, have a great day.